Usually it takes a second, but uh, I usually see people like rubbing their nose. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jason. Um, I'm live here at Streamily, and uh, I'm about to do some signings. I'm here with my friend Morgan. Hello. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, thank you all for uh, for being here with me. Um, I think I'm excited we should to have you. Start with let's see. Bum, 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 bum. We have Joyce here first. Hi, Joyce. Uh, thank you so much for this. Um, I know Joyce. Um, I think she wanted this one to be signed. So, I will do this one. I think, I hope, Felice Silver is the one that you want. Uh, oh, hey, Snooky. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Um, all right, all right. To Joyce. Exciting, exciting. It's the very first one. To Joyce. It's a pleasure to know you. Uh, All right, there it is, the very first one. It's for Joyce. Let's right. <laughs> see here, hi from Italy. Oh, that is you, Joyce. Yes, I see you. I see you. <laughs> um, hopefully you like that. Um, Let's see, Karen, I can. All right, let's see here. Now we have one for Brandy. Brandy wants a, uh, a quote from Max. Um, let's see here. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I know what to do. Um, from that show. It's mm -hmm. hard to pick one. Uh, the one that comes to mind is You're My Dream Girl. I think that was uh, one of my favorites. And that is uh, where the dreamers come from. Oh, yeah. A special section of my fans. Oh, here you go, Brandy. I think I still have that leather jacket, actually. <laughs> Don't tell the 20th Century Fox. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is so interesting. I feel like I'm kind of in a, um, a 90s like uh, club with the <laughs> with Indiana the in the background. The yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, Haley. Now, if anybody doesn't want silver trying to catch me beforehand, Paolo, hi. I see Michelle, I see self. All right. Does anybody ever ask you if you think aliens are real? You know, that was probably <laughs> the number one question that was asked when we were doing um, press for the, yeah. for the uh, first season. Um, I mean, gosh, you know, the thing about science fiction is that it's now becoming science fact. Oh, yeah. I remember going to like Tomorrowland at Disneyland and um, them talking about like someday you'll be talking on a phone that isn't attached to the wall and like you know like now we're like planning <laughs> on going to Mars so yeah it's crazy anything's possible I think um, and yeah I think when you look at how small we are in the grand scheme of things I think mm. that uh, there has to be something else out there do you think it would be aliens like Max Evans or would it be like great aliens I hope they all look like Nick Wexler honestly <laughs> I think that would be a plus for everybody. <laughs> um, God, I don't know. Like, I imagine, like, you know, they're, they're this, this little sweet spot, this, um, this Cinderella spot, I think they call it, um, where, there's, where, um, where there's just the right amount of, like, oxygen and water and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And, yeah. you know, they think, like, well, they can, that life can be had on that planet, but not necessarily, like, stuff that we know. So yeah. I'm sure there's something, you know, definitely different than Nick Wexler. Um, all right, Haley. Here's some water if you wanted to. Oh, thank you. Do you have a favorite project that you worked on? 
Um, I'm going to say that, well, this is by far one of the most extraordinary ones that I've, I've worked on. I, I made some lifelong friends there. I, um, it, it changed my life. It, was, it put me on a, a completely different course. Um, and I really, I really love the, the relationship between all the, the characters, but I really love the Max and Liz relationship, and I, I really enjoyed Max as the character. Um, but I've been, I've been fortunate enough to, to, uh, to uh, get to play a wide range of things. Um, even within the show, I guess, you know, Max, I got to play future Max, which I kind of, I was joking about the other day, I kind of have the hair <laughs> of right now, it's tucked behind my ears right now, but, um, um, and I was also able to play Nacedo and kind of have like yeah. that sort of, you know, fun, um, bad guy stuff. Um, what else did I do? In this show in particular, I did, um, we did a, um, the, uh, Ros the 47, Summer 47, I think it was called, where I got to play a completely different character mm. um, named Dick. So it was kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. A quote you like from the character Max, Mario Obi. I'm, there's so many that I like, but I, I'm going to go with some themes here, I think. All right. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to go to black for you, I think, on this one. such an iconic show. How did you feel when they brought it back? Um, it's so, That's an interesting story because, so, Julie Pleck is one of my oldest and dearest friends. I've known mm -hmm. her for, um, I mean, going on almost a quarter century. Um, and she's the one who told me that it was happening. Mm -hmm. And um, and I had a chance to meet um, Karina um, at one of Julie's birthday parties. Oh, wow. And... Um, and it, you know, I became friends with her. And um, aside from the show, uh, and then when they, and then I got a chance to, because Julie directed the pilot for the for the remake, mm -hmm. and um, so I got a chance to see it a little bit early. Um, I loved it. I, so I, I cool. think it's so cool that, I mean, it, it was a chance to tell a story with characters that we we knew, but different time period, different point in their lives. Um, I don't know, I always think it's like, you know, it's rare that anybody gets to do a TV show where it's kind of like theater, where a bunch of different artists get to go and have it, those characters, yeah. and give their own um, spin on it and, and their own take on it. Um, I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's, it was, it's not like Hamlet, but, <laughs> but, but there, was a, there was a sense of like someone else who got, got yeah. to come in. Nathan was able to come in and, and, you know, wear Max's shoes for a while. And it was just, I really, and I, to be a part of it was actually really cool for me because I was able to, kind of have one foot in the past and in the origin story and then, you know, have another one in the in the new That's retelling. So, cool. so it was very it was very unique for me. Um yeah. I always tell people that it's one of the best pilots. Truly, I mean when you watch Roswell the pilot gets you. Usually it takes like an episode or so for a few shows. Mm. But the pilot was written so well. Yeah, we had a we had the All Star team on that one. We had Jason Cadens, who came from. Uh, here you go. This is for you, Maria. Look at that. Look at that hair. <laughs> Definitely. Don't have today. I don't think I could wear. I don't think I could wear bangs anymore. I think I'm 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 past that moment in my life. <laughs> um, Shay, uh, no special instructions. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we had like the we had the All Stars on that. Jason came from my so called life which so many of my friends um, and I, you know, watched, and then um, Relativity, uh, and then um, the extraordinary David Nutter came from The X-Files. Oh, yeah. Um, so we had, we had the best of all worlds, and when, you when I read the pilot, um, I really got a sense of, like, this is an extraordinary opportunity if it's done yeah. right, because there's so much to um, the story. And... Uh, I felt like I was in good hands with both Jason and with David. So, um, all right, Shay, touche, touche, touche. When I write, I bend over so much. I think <laughs> you're just like seeing the top of my head. So I'll try to. I'm trying to set more. 
All right, Shay. That one is for you. The next, you have a cute cast picture. Oh yes, look at all these young rapscallions. <laughs> I love how like there's a double dose of red. Um, the aliens seem to be wearing some green. <laughs> Brendan's wearing black, which he always does. Um, yeah, good looking crew. Good people, wonderful people. Um, all right, this is for Brandy. See, all right, too, Brandy. Let me go back to silver on this one. There's a lot of color. Um, let's see here. Do you still keep in touch with the cast? You know, um, I see um, Nick still lives in Los Angeles, so I do spend a lot of time with him, mm -hmm. um, as much as, you know, he'll allow me. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we... we, we have a we have a set schedule of seeing each other every every month at least a couple of times oh, life great. does sometimes get in the way of that work does get in the way of that but um whenever uh brendan and mahandra come back in town i see them i see sherry from time to time she's pretty busy doing a lot of uh directing right now so that's awesome um let's see let's see, let's see. colin used to live um right down the way from me so i saw him a lot when he lived in the hood walking around with his with his family um yeah it's just a great group of people a great group it's amazing um I always love to hear when all the cast gets along and they're still friends. That's great. Yeah, it's um we got really lucky. Good bunch. All right. One of my other favorite quotes is um she asked Liz asks, asks mask, Max, Liz asked Max, <laughs> Liz asked Max why she saved him because it put him in danger and he said it was you. I thought it was just very simple and very sweet. Um, all right, Lena. All right, all right, Lena. Oh, thank you, Lena. Oh, I got to read some, you know what? Hold on a second. Da, 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 da. How do I get one? Miss Miss at 0905 asks, how do I get one? Um, there is a link in the bio on um, my Instagram page that you can go to if you're interested in, in uh, joining this party. Um, so. <laughs> uh, hey, babe. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you, too, Kate. Um, my neighbor is now giving me some shout-outs. <laughs> Um, happy Sunday indeed. Yeah, this is great. I, I, uh, I'm all the way out here in the Deep Valley. Um, and I had been out here a few times before, so this, this building looked very familiar to me. Uh, Lena. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. All right, for Lena. Okay. Pretty cool. I feel like we should have some music going. I know, right? Some, uh, mark. This is complete. Say by the bell theme. You want that? <laughs> I don't really actually know what the say by the bell theme is. Is that is that not a good thing to say? <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hello from Greece. Um, what else we got here? Hello, Max Evans. Rainton and hello, hello. That's from Japan. That's from Japan, huh? From Italy. Brandy, 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 Brandy. And Michelle. Um, yeah, I'll give you this one back. Thank you. Hi. Um, I see some of my Japanese friends here. Uh, I've been talking a lot about Tokyo lately because friends are going back, and I'm kind of PB and jealous that I'm not. Um, I spent a good amount of time in Japan, and. Uh, one of my favorite places on the planet. If anybody gets a chance to go, I, I uh, highly recommend it. All right. To Laura. Right. 
What was the audition process like for the show? I was actually just talking about this through the night. Um, I um, was in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, doing Dawson's Creek when mm -hmm. the script arrived um, in my hands. And um, it was a, it was sort of a thing that was, um, where there was talk of of staying on the show, yeah. and um, and uh, there was like a bird in hand with with a very well established show, and I was having a great time playing Chris Wolf, um, but I I thought there was just such an incredible amount of potential for for Roswell, and. Um, so you know, I I decided to go for it, and um, I thankfully yeah, <laughs> I um I I uh, it was just me and one other person, testing, and um, and I and when I found out that I got it, I was then involved with sort of like, um, trying to find the right Isabel and and mm -hmm. um, the right Michael and the right Liz, and oh, we had wow. had some you know we had we had um, had some people you know that are working and have been working for a long time and done very well for themselves. Um, who came in for the for the role roles, uh, but um, I think that we found just the right people to portray these characters, and it was it was a real cool part for me to be a part of the process in that way um, mm -hmm. at that time because I had never been a part of it before like that. So it was uh, it was really cool. Such a great cast. It, yeah, I mean we got some, except for that Nick Wexler again. I mean, <laughs> fun to hang out with, but. Uh, um, anybody who's watching this knows that he's my my bromance. He's like yeah. the dude tonight. Because and nothing against Brendan. Because Brendan doesn't live here anymore, so I can't I can't hang out with him like I want to. Uh -huh. um, and Colin is always working and always like not around. He doesn't you know I don't see him as much as I'd like to either. Um, this is for my sister who loves Roswell. Okay, this is from Jessica. It's a show that I bonded over. Okay, wonderful. It's to Jessica. Hi from Minneapolis. This is for Rosie um, from Minneapolis. I wonder where I'm Minneapolis. I grew up in a lot of different areas around Minnesota. Oh, there we go. That is some serious facial hair on this guy. This is, <laughs> but no, just pay attention to the hair. Look at the hair. <laughs> Look at the I've got <laughs> a serious flat top happening and like something, it's like I fell over and just hit my chin in some dirt. It's kind of, yeah, funny. Okay, for Rosie from Minneapolis. Oh, you, oh, I didn't realize that you were from when I did the cameo. Okay. Um, the snow to melt, I know. I, I, I don't get back to Minneapolis as much as I um, I want to, but when that snow does melt, you don't forget to put your feet in that grass. Um, okay, for Rosie. Okay. Looking at all these prints and seeing all the different projects you've been a part of. Mm -hmm. um, well, speaking of um, being from a kid from Minnesota, um, you know, I grew up doing a lot of theater. That we had some really mm -hmm. good theater components. Right? Yeah. This is for you, Rosie. Um, I did a lot of theater um, growing up, and there was also um, some commercials to be done, and um, I actually was able to, to uh, I found something online um, of a voiceover that I had done oh my God. for a, um, a serial that is no longer with us <laughs> um, called S'mores Crunch, uh, and it was wow. a cartoon, it was a cartoon of like this, this um, I think it was a brother and sister, and there's a wizard that had come in and was like, you know, trying to help us like over a river of... of uh, um, to save us from danger, and um, and I remember at the very end of it, my, the tagline was, "Can I have s'more?" 
so so yes. it was great um <laughs> so um my nine-year-old got a chance to actually um hear that and he was like that's you it was almost <laughs> like i was so little at the time um so at that i was able to do some of that stuff back in, in minnesota and um i'm gonna write one up for amanda here while we talk um but but it wasn't it wasn't until I moved out to Los Angeles where a lot of the opportunities came for me. Yeah. And so um, it was it was um, it was hard to leave because I still have friends and family back there, and I do try to get back there as, as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. But um, but uh, I found that if I really wanted to pursue this, I, I had to come out here to Los Angeles. And I've been really fortunate with the people that I've that I've met and the the people that I've been able to work with, and. Um, and again, like I'm looking at all these these pictures, yeah. and it's like there's a, a lot of it is 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 um you know the, the one of the most important shows that I ever did, which was Roswell, but also some of these other ones is like yeah I did so this one is um yeah, yeah. um this is yeah Skinwalkers <laughs> <laughs> again look at that hair I think it's my hair is kind of like that if I were to go out if you were to have seen me like with my wind blown hair before this I'm kind of looking <laughs> like that um I met one of my lifelong friends on there Kimmy Coates. He is my uh, my brother from another mother, and um, the opportunity to work with um, the legendary Stan Lee or Stan Winston, sorry, Stan Winston. Um, he uh, he always wanted to do a werewolf movie, and I grew up on all of his movies, yeah. and, and, and like Terminator and Jurassic Park. When you walk in there to his his um, office and his studio, um, there's like the Jurassic Park T Rex coming from this side, oh my and gosh. then another um, dinosaur coming from that side, the Spinosaurus, I believe it was. And like you're like underneath them like that, and <laughs> and there was like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger's Term Terminator, there was um, Edward Scissor's hands, there was Tom Cruise in the Interview with the Vampire, and they're all just kind of like looking at you as you walk in, and going, "This is amazing. This is why I did the movie." Mm -hmm. And then to be there, I'll be at be like three o'clock in the morning for the first makeup test to have Stan Winston like looking over you like that and like just smiling from ear to ear like a ten year old. I mean, it was just like That's just a so wonderful cool. experience. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'm trying to check in with the, everybody else here. Hello from Argentina. Guy Pierce. <laughs> I've never gotten that before, Guy Pierce. Um, hell of an actor. Um, and he's a pretty handsome gent. So are you sure you got the right guy here? Um, um, thank you for that. That's very kind of you. Um, yeah, he's a hell of an actor, that guy. All right, Amanda. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Brennan still has these shoes too. I definitely, if you look at this wardrobe right here, I've I still again don't tell 20th century and the and the, the Michigan Stay J Fro oh, Michigan J Frog so. can't come <laughs> to me um, and get me because Michigan J Frog is not a part of the business anymore in that way. Um, um, <laughs> so I, I I recently watched um, uh, Noah Wiley do something where he was sitting in the middle of his office and he was surrounded by stuff that he had nicked. There was, including like the floor from ER. He had had like <laughs> little tiles from ER that he had dug, that he had somehow went out with like, you know, hammer and, and chisel and, and, oh and uh, took up. <laughs> I don't have that level of stuff. It's just that mostly like the clothes stuff, they're like, you guys, you can go ahead and take this stuff if you'd like. Um, so I, I never want to admit the amount of things that I may or may not have, allegedly. <laughs> But because I don't want anybody showing up at my house and, and demanding it back, but but they do know that I do. I have a few of his jackets. Um, I have a bunch of Max's. Um, just a lot of his wardrobe. I, I, I will wish go. we had thought about in the beginning doing. I thought it would be cool to do like the Tabasco sauce and have you sign bottles of Tabasco oh, sauce. Oh yeah, Wouldn't yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? I used to, I mean, spoiler, I used Tabasco <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and completely as a result of this show, because I didn't use it before that. Um, and not that we use real Tabasco sauce on the show, um, but it, there's something Pavlovian about it that I like. was like, oh, I should probably try this, and I really enjoyed it, and so now I use Tabasco sauce all the time. Wasn't there a thing where all the fans started yes. sending the studio Tabasco sauce? Yes, from the middle, between the second season and the third season, um, we got a lot of people saying, you know, don't cancel the show, don't cancel the show, and they sent all this Tabasco sauce um, 
and suffice it to say we had a season three so <laughs> maybe that's all of your fault thank you so much um but yeah and also i, I have a lot of tabasco sauce and that's, maybe that's why i like it so much because i feel like you must take this <laughs> um all right this is for dana da, 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 da. i hope you do the instagram live oh it's your son's fourth birthday well happy birthday to your son i understand that's a much bigger priority to have um Hopefully someone records this. Wow. Um, Dana, I will definitely um, be looking we'll out for you. I'm sure that you get to see this. Yes. Awesome. More than has said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard behind the curtain. She's the one. <laughs> so pay attention to her. Um, all right. Speaking of hair, again, there's a lot of hair on this on this on this TV show. All the all the, the dudes and the girls had some some nice hair, some nice flow. Um, and those who sent video messages, Jason did watch them before we started the stream. Yes, thank you so much for sending the videos. I, I it's just, I'm very new to all of this kind of stuff. There's so much happening at once, but um, <laughs> it was very sweet for you guys to to send those things in and. and uh, Thank you so much. Um, hello from Leeds. Uh, what favorite Japanese food do you like? Um, I'm gonna go with uh, sushi. I mean, some of the best uh, sushi I had in my entire life was at Skiji Fish Market um, at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, they have this huge fish market where they sell fish to the, the restaurateurs and the sushi chefs around the city. Oh, and wow. you can go and watch them bid on these tuna that you know would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and the size of a car. And oh then you go gosh. and you, you know, eat the most amazing food in the world. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Spain. I haven't been to Spain yet. Mocha uh, 2022. Ohio, Ohio gozaimasu. Um, okay, um, Dre. 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 It's a great name. Print. <laughs> Same print. Same print. Forty-seven. No idea. Da da da. Please sign. Complete. Melanie. I have a silver one, Melanie, and I'm, I'm going to sign it above the neck as you requested. Um, I'm gonna give myself a little neck tattoo here. <laughs> Let's see. Above your shirt, on your neck. Should I give myself a, a hickey? <laughs> All right. Remember those. <laughs> um. Um, I have a few that, I mean, there's so many really wonderful stories that we were able to tell. Um, there's, there's your neck tattoo right there. <laughs> Hopefully that's where you'd like it. Um, favorite episodes. I, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot that we were able to do on that show. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, I mean, um, uh, I would say, so... End of the World is one of my favorites because I know there, it's one of my favorites because I was able to play a version of a character that I had grown to know uh, and explore for an entire season. And the audience had been able to, to um, get to know him for an entire season and then flash forward him to, you know, where his life choices have gotten him. And 
and uh, and sort of play those two juxtapose each other sometimes from frame to the next frame. Mm. Um, it was really it was really cool to be able to do that. Um, it was also it's also a very heartbreaking um, show because he's basically in essence asking him his younger self to um, get the love of his life to you know break up with him and get him to not yeah. love her anymore. Um, it was really I, I thought it was a really special one. Um, and that was a very it was very rewarding for me as an actor to do that. But um, I would say Max the Max was also very fun. Like I said earlier, I, I was able to play uh, this sort of fun um, bad guy, Nisado. Just I, I, there was just there was a lot of fun that I was able to have pretending to be Max, but like doing something just a little bit different. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, Heat Wave was I think where a lot of stuff changed in the show for uh, the characters. Um, but I, but the pilot, I'm always going to go back to the pilot as being the one that was, it was where it all started. Such a good pilot. Jason did an amazing job writing that, um, from that source material. And, um... I mean, what's more iconic than when you point to the sky? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody asked me that, um, I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, somebody had asked me if that was from E.T. and I never made that connection before. Ah. Um, but I remember like when we when we did, because E.T. was such a, a huge thing yeah. for me, it was so formative for me. Um, but uh, it, um, it is, it's one of those things where I think you could just feel like something was happening that day because we were shooting in the, um, in the band room for the entire day. And the way that um, um, the DP had lit it, it was really sort of just moody and, mm. and surreal looking and otherworldly. And mm. um, and uh, it was just one of those things that you could tell that something was something pretty cool was happening, something special was happening. But again, that's all. That's really, truly all. It boils down to Jason Kadams with how he wrote stuff, and then how David Nutter had set up the shot and just sort of allowed Shiri and I in that moment to just explore in a very safe space. It was uh, it was pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, another jacket, another jacket. So. I'm not sure if it's Tara or Tara, because I know uh, a few of each of that version. So I'm gonna write it the way it's spelled. What do you think, Tara, Tara? I've also, I also know people that are Tara and Tara. I'm gonna go with T-A-R-A. And you guys filmed some of this in Roswell, right? Um, no, we didn't. Why did I think the crash down was a real place? Because it looks almost identical to the real one in Roswell. Okay. So there is a crash down. Um, there is a UFO center um, okay. that they did. They, they um, our, our set design was incredible. Um, and where we shot that, so the person I was talking to the other day about the process of um, getting... Um, the um, opportunity to play Max Evans was um, a friend of ours named Liz, um, who I remember when she was a teenager, she drove out from um, Colorado to watch us do uh, some night shoot stuff. Yeah. And it was the scene from, um, it was the scene from uh, the second episode of the second season. Max is running uh, down the street with his, he, he just happened to have his, his shirt off. <laughs> he was pulling a McConaughey that night, and he was, uh, he took his shirt off. And he, and he, um, he was in bed with our shirt, and he was running down the, the, uh, the street um, half naked. And so in between stuff, there was a crowd of people that go over there and talk to them. And Liz was standing there, and I remember her, because she's very tall, um, and so she stood out amongst her, amongst her peers, and I remember talking to her that night. And flash forward, I saw her out somewhere. She's now a, um, a really talented writer and executive producer. Wow. Who she wrote for, um, uh, Shiri has actually directed some of her stuff on, uh, I think it's, is it Blackish, I believe is the, it's either that or Grownish. I can't remember which one that she did, but, so Shiri directed one of her that episodes. Amazing. Um, so that, that crash down right here, this one, mm. um, is, there's still that there's a restaurant there I've, I've been to recent recently that is still there, in uh, in West Covina off of Citrus Avenue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, you know I drove there a lot so I guess I remember exactly where it is. Um, but 
Um, so that 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 is uh, West Covina is where we did uh, um, the crash down. We did the UFO center. We did wow. um, the high school. The very the pilot we did a high school in Long Beach. Um, okay. Yeah, and then um, and then uh, most of us was West Covina and Aqua Dolce. And Aqua Dolce, I'm sh I'm sure um, a lot of you all out there know that um, they did. Um, a lot of music videos out there, but also um, Star Trek. They did some Star Trek out there. The Vasquez Rocks is where um, a lot of that stuff is. It's a very unique rock formation. That's so cool. And that's where the that's where the Grand Rift was. Um, all right, let's see here. I feel like I'm getting out of frame when I go when I when I, when I hunker down so much when I when I do this. I also I have a tick that my friends give me shit about. Um, where sometimes when I'm really focusing, I'll I'll chew on my tongue. I'm trying desperately not to do that. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. My mom was like, do you already chewing gum? I'm like, no, no. Speaking of crash down, what was that? Said so speaking. The crash down. Oh yeah. The good old crash down. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, the the restaurant is still there. The um, uh, half crashed uh, UFO is not. But um, yeah, I was gonna go in there. I ha I still have his um, his driver's license, Max Evans' driver's license. Yes. And uh, I was gonna go in there as a joke one day for his birthday, just so I <laughs> try to order a drink with it and see if someone if they would, you know serve me some alien blast um you should do it and film it so everybody can see it right <laughs> <laughs> on max's birthday um let's see here for bell hello would you sign your name across the chest bell. oh thank you bell it's very sweet that's very sweet thank you um all right or above your head i think maybe above my head is probably the best place for it i think Do you uh did you watch the show at all or do you are you familiar oh, yes. with it all? <laughs> do you have um I actually have um the symbol, you know, the, the swirly what is that called? Yes. Um yeah, the, where the constellations were. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um somebody had gifted me a necklace of that. It was a big Roswell, Buffy, oh, yeah. X Files, like those are my shows. Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I did all of them. <laughs> Do you have your phone on you right now? Yes. Do you mind if I show the back of it? Oh, yeah. I, I noticed this. It was pretty pretty cool. I noticed that. I thought I was in good company when I saw that. Um, Big alien fan. Yeah, I, I kind of I went across the board and did like, I did, um, I think I did Buffy, I did Dawson's, I did Seventh Heaven. Um, kind of ran the gamut of, I just went through all the WB shows and then finally they're like, you've been here long enough. And we'll then you're also in The Grudge with, with, with Sarah, Sarah, Sarah yeah. Michelle. Yep. I've known Sarah, <laughs> I, I knew Sarah even way before that though. Sarah and I, I've known her since like, I want to say like 90, it's been a while, uh, 95 or before that even. Oh wow. I've known her for a long, long time. And so, so when, when I did Buffy, it was really, it was a really wonderful experience all around, but especially because I had known Sarah for so long. Um, and then to be able to go to Japan and do the garage with her was really, it was just really special. That's so cool. Um, let's see here. To Jason from Jason. There you go. I mean, these are the shows that, it's some of the best television. It's that perfect, campy, good writing. Mm, mm -hmm. it, had, it kind of had the best blend of all things. Yeah. Um, and we, we shot on film, which is I'm very foreign these days. Um, and there, there's, a, there's a very specific look to it that feels very moody and very cinematic as a result of just the film stock that we used. And what I love about it, like even with like Roswell, it's not just about like aliens, you know, there's something more to it. 
there's always those deeper meetings behind those shows. <laughs> yes. Happy 44th birthday, 44. Welcome to the club. A friend of mine was actually just mentioning how Roswell reminded her of like her family's immigration process and being an immigrant. Yes. Which is what I thought that Karina and company did um, with Roswell, New Mexico, which is really brilliant because they really leaned into that and really wanted to explore that metaphor. Um, I thought it was done very, just so well. Uh, and what we did on um, Roswell, you know, the, the themes of, because that, because where these kids were, were, you know, 15, 16 years old, yeah. and adolescents and high school at that time, and trying to find your place in the world. Um, it was very specific to that age group and what, what Karina did on Roswell, New Mexico. They were in a different part of their lives, but mm -hmm. having that immigration was a really huge part of it as well. I think we're all always trying to figure out what we're doing. Like, you know, yeah. no one's always got it just figured out. Um, we're always constantly searching. Um, but like the, the, the literal metaphor for a first kiss, when Max kissed Liz for the very first time, she literally saw stars. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah. and that connection with him, it was just, yeah, it was really a lot, of, a lot of special moments in that. All right, well, happy 44th birthday, Jason. I'm curious, so this is the thing. So Jason Kadams, um, Jason Kadams, his nickname was Jay. A lot of people who has the name Jason, mm -hmm. their nickname is Jay. Um, but my entire life, people have called me Jay. But when they sign it, like in a card or like that, yeah. People who really know me, it's just the letter J. So it's just J. And so me and Kadams had this thing. When I, when I finally I sent something to him, like the very first season, he was like, you get it. It's just J. It's not J-A-Y. Some people, they like it. But for me and Jason Kadams, it was just J. So I don't know if you're a J-A-Y Jason or a just J, but um, come over to the club. It's a good, good, good club to be part of. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, Brennan and Mahana do do um, some live rewatches. I do like that as well. I've kind of I've snuck in there every now and then, kind of like um, jumped in the direct messaging and kind of uh, had a few uh, ideas about what they're saying. Um, Bloomington, who is this? Rosa Tag Twenty Three. I'm in Bloomington, Minnesota. I grew up South Minneapolis. Yeah, I was South Minneapolis for a, quite a while. Um, Southdale was was where we hung out all the time. And Bloomington is where I'd go skateboard with some of my friends, because some of my friends were in Bloomington. Yeah. Aaron Bear, Bloomington cool. Hey, I know that guy, I think. Aaron Bear. That's <laughs> my brother. <laughs> um, who? There he is. There he is. Aaron Bear. I think his first um, acting gig outside of Minnesota was I was doing a show called Push mm. in San Diego, where um, we were playing these Olympic hopefuls. And I played a sprinter, and uh, Aaron is in the very uh, first episode of the, of the series, I believe. Oh, wow. And he, I think he came back for a few things, but yeah. If anybody can um, wrangle up that video, don't tell Aaron, but just send it right to me. I'd love to see that. <laughs> um, what's so great about normal? That's true. That's one of my other favorite lines. Um, my birthday is also 4-3. Happy birthday, Allison. 4-3. That's, uh, that is Marlon Brando's birthday. Um, my mother's is 4-4. Four four. It's a uh, good company as well. All right, Allison, happy birthday. Um, I think she wants you to write the quote and then what's hand it print if possible. <laughs> can we draw one? Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, all, that's all my face. That, that, that would be awesome if you had some like silver ink here to do. You should have thought about that. Mm, that would be amazing. Only, um, only if it's glow in the dark. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Next time. <laughs> um, let's see here. All right. All right, Allison. One L.
All right, happy birthday, Allison. That's really awesome. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Baltimore. I've not been from Baltimore, but I have some wonderful friends who live there. Um, Charlotte, North Carolina. I have been there. We did. Uh, we did. Um, Dawson's Creek in Wilmington, North Carolina, and um, had uh, driven up there a couple times. Um, my wife was working down there on a show called Secrets and Lies, and we had to actually go up there to Charlotte to do a few things as well. Um, do you have the full song in the air, Alejandra? Oh, it just passed me by real quick. Megan, two thirteen. I don't have that, actually. I'm sure Mahandra has that somewhere. Uh, I can actually ask her about that. Well, this is, this, things are going by so fast. Someone named their son Max, and my daughter Isabel, after Richard Roswell. That's Aww. extraordinary. How old, are, how old are they now? Um, it keeps on going faster, so I can't quite see it. Um, you see what's happening here? John Fly 10. That's wonderful. That's extraordinary. <laughs> Very sweet. Very sweet. Um, uh, Rob, <laughs> Rob, I think Bob McGrath does not like to have the heartburn from, <laughs> from uh, Tabasco. Sorry, Bob. When we go out for beers, I think that uh, I'll <laughs> abstain from putting some in your, uh, your Bud Light. Uh, another, another buddy of mine there. Um, how was my on my Buffy experience? But my Buffy experience is pretty amazing for me because it was the very first episode of television where I had like an overall arcing um, story. It wasn't just in a few scenes. I was in most of the episode, and um, and again, it was really special because I had known Sarah for so long, and um, and Joss Whedon was the guy who directed it. And so, you know, and he created the show, so it was like, it was, it was like a pretty cool experience all the way around. Um, but I played somebody who came off as being like this nice guy mm -hmm. who had matriculated from, you know, <laughs> their old school and, um, and then ended up, you know, having ulterior motives. But, um, but, the, and, but also kind of tragic circumstances. Yeah. Um, he had, a, like, terminal brain cancer, and so it was, there was a real... Um, turn there for, for uh, Ford, Billy Ford, Fordham. I don't know why I know these things, <laughs> but I do because it was really special to me. But, um, but yeah, golly, I had the most extraordinary orange vest. <laughs> it was, it, um, that was not my fault for anybody who wants to give me shit about that. I definitely didn't like the, didn't want to choose the orange vest, but the wardrobe was very like this is this is happening right now. It's the it's 90s. An interesting choice. <laughs> this is the 90s, and you're gonna go with the bright tangerine orange uh, sweater vest. <laughs> but it it is memorable. That's that's one thing. Victoria from one alien to another. There you go. Exactly. Um, all right. Was there any project that you feel um, like you were nervous to audition or? Oh, were... wow. I mean, I think, you know, some people get, everybody has different, um, I think, um, levels of, you know, some people call it nerves, some people call it excitement. I mean, there's usually, usually a healthy blend of, of that in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, if you're, afraid of something, I think that's what you're supposed to go towards because that's how you really challenge yourself, I think. Um, and so being, you know, a little bit nervous about it or, or excited about it is, is, you know, a very important part of it. Um, so one of the things that I was kind of afraid of and nervous of, I guess, um, I mean, when I had to sing for, <laughs> I had to sing for End of the World um, mm -hmm. in Roswell and um, I, I'm not, I mean, yes, I can sing in the shower, but I'm, I'm not <laughs> somebody who felt very comfortable going outside of that, let alone, you know, recording it in a small studio like this where you mm -hmm. felt comfortable. And, you know, Max was supposed to 
you know, I had to intentionally, you know, be kind of bad, not yeah. horrible, but somewhat bad. Mm. So that wasn't hard for me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but um, then to have it blasted through the canyon of Paramount Studios, so that not just my own crew had to be subjected to it, but like everybody <laughs> in Paramount Studios that day. Um, uh, yeah, that was something that I was a little bit um, afraid of, but you know, it worked out. I mean, it was a, it was a very sweet, scene, <laughs> a very sweet scene. Um, um, but yeah, that was one thing. Um, I would say also, like when you when you when you really, um, uh, I admire a lot of filmmakers, and sometimes when I have to go and, and do something for them, I might be a little bit, yeah. you know, excited, nervous, you know, kind of blend to there. I had to go do that for um, like we were just talking about for all this yeah. loan, so. Um, when I went and met with Oliver, I was very like I was super excited. I'm a huge fan of his, but also there was like you know there was an you know, accelerated heartbeat yeah. when that happened. But um, yeah, uh, it makes you feel alive. Size blue or black marker. Blue or black marker. They were it's specific not, for this it's, one. <laughs> oh well, yes, I know why. Because <laughs> this was for the tattooist, where it was evil in ink, and it was the all about black ink. Uh, little known fact, when I was in New Zealand, we were doing a, um, we were doing a movie that was really all about um, Samoan and Maori culture, but, um, mm -hmm. and so, but, but, but the, the tattoo, tattooing was, um, you know, the, we had a, we had a, a Maori um, tattooist, and he also had, um, he had Samoan and Maori blood in him, so he had like both worlds. And um, they, we were honoring their culture, and and we wanted to be very respectful and, and be truthful. And um, our director was Maori, and um, they were so kind enough to um, honor us with blessings. And um, there is, as of the time of this movie, there was only two um, American Samoan chiefs. Mm. Um, uh, one of them is um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I don't know. I don't know if anything ever happened with him, but some actor that. <laughs> some, what happened to that guy? I mean, you know, I met him. I, I worry about him. I hope he does okay. Um, and then me. They like they 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 made me like a an honorary chief. That's so cool. Um, Samoan chief. So I, it was. I, we, we did a we did a ceremony, and it was just like yeah, it was very special. That that time in New Zealand, it was very special. So. An extraordinary place. That's amazing. That's one place I've always wanted to go. Yeah, I had friends who had been there before um, for a few years um, working, and and they were often like really far off, remote places, um, and so most of their experience was about you know the the uh, the wonder of the world around the cities, mm -hmm. and and um, the nature, but but Auckland itself is also a really cool city. So being outside in nature and and um, we were able to go to the, the beach that was in the piano, the Black Sand Beach. Oh, wow. Um, Kitty Kitty Beach, I believe it was called. Um, they had two different names for it, but it was so beautiful because the, the, the sand, the black sand, was mm -hmm. hot from the sun. Wow. And, and then the ocean all around it was wild. The, the waves and the wind was um, very poetic. Um, all right, to Mike. Hey, Jason, thank you so much. Well, I will say this, Mike, you know, everybody goes through rough patches and it's, you know, so those winds can be pretty strong, but they go away. And those rough patches do go away at some point. So keep your head up, Mike. Um, all right, let's see here. This this uh, this tattooist, um, I it, it took so much uh, internal strength and um, and uh, 
an iron will not to get tattoos on that film because <laughs> it was like that looks really cool actually well, I, can, I can get a full <laughs> sleeve that would look pretty awesome it might limit me in what I can do after that but I mean like that's part of the thing is like you go in to do this um, this makeup and it takes a long time to put it on but it looks so cool so if you put it on permanently then you have to have makeup to hide it on the next project unless I was gonna go do tattooist two three four five and six <laughs> Um, okay, let's see here. To none. Big fan since the OG Roswell days. Okay. So in this circumstances, do I just sign my name when it says yeah, to none? Yeah, you just sign your name. Okay. Well, thank you for being a fan since the OG days. Um, and I can't believe it's been... So 99 would make it 24 years now. My gosh. So the next year is the big 25. Yeah, the big quarter. I wonder what we'll do for that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. Be cool to have you guys in here and do like a watch party or something. I think we could wrangle something like that up. Let's see here. What's my favorite part of the ship, the shipping news? In your home province. Oh, wow. Um, the shipping news. The accent was something incredible. I had no idea. I didn't really honestly know that Newfoundlanders had an accent when I got the job, um, let alone that accent. Uh, it was... It's a... If you, it's a... I love the book. Annie Prue, uh, the book is extraordinary. But a very difficult um, uh, movie to put from, from book to, to film. Um... But uh, the accent being, you know, kind of Canadian, Irish, Scottish, boom, um, and little quirky things like dropping the H's. Newfoundlanders don't say H's so much. They don't say horse, they say arse. Um, uh, and they say this and that. Um, that, was, that was quite a, th uh, a thing to kind of like, you know, fine tune that accent. But... Um, there was just there's just giants on that on that uh, movie. My favorite one of my favorite memories was was um, Judy Dench um, telling me that she had no idea how to play pool. <laughs> we were at um, this bar uh, in Trinity Bay called Rockies. I don't know if it's still there or not, but I still have my hat. But you know, we, we were we were in a small fishing village um, in the northern Newfoundland, in Trinity Bay, uh, northeastern. And um, so there was, I would say, four churches, three uh, cemeteries, and one bar. And um, we chose to hang out at the bar. So um, whenever we weren't working, we would we would be at the bar and just hanging out. And there's a pool table, and, and Judy, Judy was uh, there one time, and and I said, "Do you want to play pool?" And she said, oh, "I don't know how to play pool." And uh, I said, uh, oh, I can teach you. She said, oh, no, I mustn't. I said, but you should. No, no, I mustn't. You should. Okay. And so I started to kind of show her gently how to play pool. And so we rack them up, and she wipes the table with me, completely destroys me. And, like, right before the end of our match, I said, never play pool, huh? She said, I never said I can play billiards. Mm. Like, oh, God. I got my ass handed to me by the great dame Judy Dench. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, she. Um, <laughs> so, a warning to anybody else out there: if she's if Judy Dench says she doesn't know how to play something, don't believe her. <laughs> um, all right, Bob. I'm a big fan of yours since the OG Roswell days. Yes, of course, absolutely. Um, second photo. I got the second photo to help the cause. Venus F. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, wonderful. It's for a good cause. Um, and thank you all for being here to support that. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. So, so when it says Bob, do I? I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just uh, since there's a second one, I'm going to go do some stuff here for the tattooist. <laughs> Awesome. All right. 
another of these guys. Okay, I mean, it's a favorite quote, favorite quote. I'm doing another neck tattoo for you on this one. <laughs> not, there's a lot of green happening in here. <laughs> All right. It's such a 90s looking print. It really is. It's a, it's a very 90s looking print. Like, I imagine it like on a, one of those trading cards. I think, no, they, they do actually make these in the trading cards. This might actually be a trading <laughs> card. Um, I mean, I know they make them out of this. I've, I've, I've signed them before, and I've seen them before. And we had actually, we had a magnet of this. And I have that somewhere still. That, like, my, my grandmother and my mother collected these things. Um, and they, there's a magnet of this picture. Um, but I can hear, like, that music. Like I, I can hear Counting Crows, I can hear Moby, I can hear Dido when I when I, when I see this. By the way, a big fan of all those artists. I, I, Counting Crows is one of my favorites still to this day, and one of the reasons, like when I when I came out from Minnesota, I flew out here first, but then I drove back and forth to Minnesota quite a bit from Los Angeles, and that that their their album, um, the first album, August and everything after. I mean, I went through three copies of that because I just, on my trip back and forth, I just listened to it end to end. Such a awesome thing. And Dido is like, so cool. yeah. When we first heard the the song that that uh, they were that they were trying to get, me and Jason and David were all sitting around on set, and the, and David played the song for us, and I was like, oh no, you have to get that song. That song is like, it says everything. He's like, oh, we're gonna try it. Too. I'm like, no, 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 you have to, you have to. <laughs> if you have to take some of my paycheck to try to like entice her. I mean, you Which can't hear the song now without thinking of Roswell. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm in a in, when I'm in a restaurant, or I'm in a like a, 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 a at some um, re, like grocery store, and I hear it, it's it's very surreal to me. Elisa, it's a very beautiful spelling, of Elisa. Hey Sandra. Uh, we all found our new favorite band and songs and we became Ronzo fans. <laughs> yeah, we were able to use some pretty good music in that show. Um, Tom Hanks, yeah. Oh, these are going by so fast. Season one is unique. I think I'm I think I'm really far beyond. Oh, let's see, oh no. There we go. Huh? Forgive me, the the the, um, the messages are going by pretty quick here. Um, champagne poodle, are you a friend of my mother's? <laughs> my mother has two poodles, and she she loves poodles, and she goes to poodle um, get-togethers all the time. So you might know my mom. Um, Counting crows, Scooby Dolls. Hopefully, I'm going to go see them. They're they're doing a tour. The the uh, Counting Crows. Hopefully, I'll be able to go. Uh, and, and uh, see them. Did I work with Sherry on Roswell, New Mexico? She did. She directed um, one of the episodes I was in. I think she directed my second episode I was in. Um, let me see. Yes, the second. She directed the second episode that I was in, which is also very cool, very surreal. You know, when we were when we were doing the setup for the shots, mm -hmm. she would come in there, and we talk about it and then she did then we're gonna go rehearse and I'd you know walk to the set to the mm -hmm. marks and I look back at her like I'm expecting her to come <laughs> and join me <laughs> and I was like oh no that's right you're gonna be by the monitor now <laughs> but she you know she's on a tear she's been she's just been directing 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 um so that's awesome amazing amazing it's so cool to see how all of your peers and stuff, they go on and do different things and, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, everyone's gone off to do, you know, pretty well for themselves and, and also different things. Mm. Um, the fact that Sherry's doing so much directing now, I know Brenda and Mahandra have, um, they wrote and Brenda directed um, a pilot for this thing called B&T, which is a, 
which is um, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm really excited to see it. Um, hopefully, they'll show it to me soon the next time they're in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, and Colin has been doing some amazing work, mm. amazing work. Um, such a talented kid. I say kid, and he's like. <laughs> I think I think I think like a lot of these guys were probably a, a, a three years younger than me, maybe a couple more, give or take. Yeah, we were we we're all very young men. Um, I love your Max's hairstyle; it suits you the most. Well, I, we had very we had thanks Jason for this live. Oh, my pleasure. Um, I don't even know how long we've been going for, but it's been. It's been very fun. It feels like, it almost feels like Vegas. I don't have any idea where the time is going. <laughs> and there's no clocks in here. We're um, still on VIPs. I mean, this is amazing, Oh, fantastic. Guys. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Um, what was I saying, though, about the haircut? Oh, yeah, well, if you look at these, like, if you look at these real quick, this is hairstyle. Let me find that one. Real quick. This one? Yeah, this is, this is number two. This is hairstyle number one. <laughs> this, is, this is season one. And then they decided to do a little bit different. This is season two. And then I went off and did the shipping news between season two and season three, and they dyed my hair. And so it's a f totally different color. So when you see us in the very first episode of season three, and we're in that, that um, blue Chevelle convertible, and I've got like the leather jacket on. I've got like, my hair is still kind of like, they had to re-dye it in a different way. Because when they, when they dyed my hair for shipping news, they had to, um, they had to make it blonde first, because mm -hmm. I had dark hair. So they had to like make it bleach blonde like, oh, like wow. M&M style like bleach blonde and then put the dye into it so it was really quite shocking and then also you have to try to figure out to go back to uh, Roswell season 3 after that <laughs> um Sherry let me get this for you to Sherry a quote I think it is one of my favorite quotes um, from Max when he says, just simply it was you when he was asked, why would you save me when it puts everything that you know and love in danger? It's a very sweet sentiment. Um, it's one of those cases of less is more. Yep. Which I think Max excelled at. <laughs> this is more. Um, does anybody else have any other favorite quotes that they like here? This is so exciting. <laughs> the Philippines. Oh, I had a, an, an amazing time in uh, in France. Texas. Some big time in Texas. Austin have been there a few times for the film festival. You just saw Counting Crows in New Zealand. Amazing. Oh, that's right. They were just down there. That's right. Adam was sending some stuff of him by the beach. Um, all right. Let's see here. Haley. Haley McKellips. I do love the What's So Great About Normal because I think that, you it's know, a great line. it's a great line. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I'm a big fan of art. I think that the most beautiful art is the little imperfections when someone's... That's what I was going to say earlier, too, with Roswell. It relates so much to those people that felt like they didn't fit in. And didn't feel normal. Didn't feel seen. I was one yeah. of those kids. I, I was very I was very small for my size and we moved around quite a bit. My parents were hippies and so we, mm -hmm. we moved around a lot, so I was always the new kid. I was always the outsider no matter what. And um and uh so I felt very displaced and very unseen and very out of place. And um 
you know, coupled that with the fact that I was very small, I'm, I'm, I was joking with my nine-year-old who, when he turned nine in October, mm -hmm. and so they, they measured him at the doctor and they, he was four or six at nine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just wanna, I wanna express this to you, Atticus, that when I was in the seventh grade, I was four foot 11. <laughs> so, so when I went to high school, I was five, two and a half. Wow. So I walked through these doors and I, first day of high school, ninth grade, and I'm, I'm walking in and I just immediately start looking up. And it's just like, there's like this giant man with a beard and a mullet. Oh my God. And you know, his girlfriend is like a, a woman. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm like, I'm in the wrong place. I just, so yeah, I, um, there's, a, there's a lot of different reasons why I think I uh, understood Max very well. And I think- It also goes back to like, because Max was so special, it's saying that when you're not normal, when you're different, you're special. Yeah, exactly. Which I really love. Exactly. Charlene. Charlene or Charlene? It's also a beautiful name. <laughs> I love it. Keep dreaming. You got it. Keep dreaming. All right. I love it. All my dreamers out there supporting today. It's really wonderful. Thank you guys for showing up. I love that. Wendy Cruz Jan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you prefer working on TV or movies or plays? Honestly, wherever the good story is, I'll be there. If it's the you know the corner yeah. of the local you know the grocery store, if there's a good story told. I yeah. mean, I, I've I've enjoyed I I love doing theater because there's an immediate response to it. Mm. And it's been such a long time since I've done that. Um, there is some really extraordinary stories being told right now on TV. Um, the pacing is much faster, um, yeah. and so you really have to be on your game to be to be prepared to play full out with other people. But there's some really extraordinary um, shows out there right now. And movies, you can be, you could do a very, you know, independent-minded film where you don't have a whole lot of money and a whole lot of resources. And it's really about everyone's passion to tell a good story. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a lot of time. So again, you have to be on it to be really focused, to be present and, and, and tell the best possible story you can. Because sometimes having that luxury of being on such a big, giant movie, sometimes you can overwork stuff. Mm -hmm. But and sometimes you 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 can find the right note. So um, yeah. it really just depends on what the character is. Um, and I've done small uh, small parts in bigger movies, which has been wonderful. Like in, in the yeah. shipping news, there was it wasn't a big movie, but it was a really important story. Um, and it wasn't a very big, but the part was bigger in the book. Mm. Um, but I think that the the book was so massive and vast. And Prue would often write in these meandering prose sometimes of. A uh, chapter would go on for 15, 20 pages, and sometimes it would go on for two. So it was a really hard thing to kind of um, transfer over into a, a movie. But uh, but yeah, that was a, that was a good one to be a part of. So yeah, I I honestly, I've all, I, I haven't been able to do comedy so much either. I did that when I first started out. Yeah. Doing comedy, I, I'm a lot of my friends when we were doing Roswell. A lot of our friends, like from the '70s show and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. they, like Wilma would always say, like, oh yeah, no, I. I I, uh, I showed up, we did like a, a table read, and then my day was over, <laughs> you know? And then they, it, it, I'm just saying that the the the, um, the amount of time they, they had to be there wasn't yeah. as much as like doing a, an hour long drama, but they they worked their asses off. Like once they started like doing rehearsal stuff, yeah. they worked their asses off. And then they had a really great time, because there is that little sort of, that, that live to the audience where you do get feedback. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of, of, of that instant gratification there too. You know what's working, what isn't working. Um, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. That would be a lot of fun. Well, I imagine, especially with sci-fi, it's there's a whole lot more time that it takes because there's all the details and world building and all that good stuff. A hundred percent. And I think when you once you build that world, you want to stick by those rules. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, 
like a house of cards can kind of all start to yeah. unravel and fall down. So you really want to be specific about when you're bending something a little bit. I'm noticing. I think since the tattooist, I've I've gone to like the black T-shirt thing. I have a lot of black T-shirts in my wardrobe. <laughs> That to you, Morgan. Thank you so much. All right, Katie. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ooh, I got soda in my hand. Um, found recently um, my Paramount um, security pass. Oh, wow. I, had not, I was like, I was moving stuff around, doing some spring cleaning, and I was like, something fell over, and I was like, what's, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. And I had to, I had to sign it, and so that signature is, is kind of, uh, is unchanged. All right, to Jennifer Wilson. We should do a poll to see like what kind of merch people would love. Like Roswell merch. I'm really thinking of Tabasco socks. <laughs> That's a really great idea. How do we, how would we do that on here? Just get a bunch of Tabasco sauce bottles. <laughs> how do we do a how how do we do a poll on this? Can we do a poll on the live or should I do that in some other thing? Yeah, you can ask your fans. We can also do it on Streamly as well. Hmm. It's a great idea. Singapore. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. I have not been able to go there. Um, Roswell, Japan. Got senseless for my collection. A bit, a bit afraid to watch. Me too. Uh, <laughs> um, that was a that was a tough one. Senseless was a tough one. Um, do you have the Crash Jones menu? Interesting. I do somewhere. I do. I do have that somewhere. Um, I do have that somewhere. I have the other day. Um, I went to go put on my jeans, um, and I realized it said it said Maximus on the inside. <laughs> it's like, He's oh, following you. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, uh, I still have it just sitting in my in my rotation. So much Roswell merch. Okay, Michelle, Roswell Michelle, I know you. All right, Michelle, what do you got here? So much Roswell merch, massive collector. I know, I've seen the collection. She's posted quite a bit on that. It's extraordinary. Um, but what do you guys think? Like, what do you think, um, what do you think uh, we could do? Would we do Tabasco bottles or? I'm trying to think here. You have to have something with the symbol. Something with the symbol. I mean, I could put my, my silver handprint on something, I suppose. That would be cool. Um, let's see here. Very. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Um, Buenos Aires, Italy. I, we did a we did a big a trip. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Italy and France. Mm. Um, we call it our big polo goalie trip before we decided to try to have children. <laughs> and so, and so, um, we went to Italy um, and France. And I I can't pick a favorite. It's just it's so amazing. Um, Jessica from Brooklyn, New York. I love Brooklyn. Um, number 14, okay. I still have those jeans. God, I'm gonna get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> what we've all learned today is the that wardrobe. Jason has stolen the entire I, I think it's, wardrobe. I have the entire wardrobe. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The orange vest. <laughs> look at that. Look, look at that. And the hair too. Iconic. <laughs> What'd you say? Iconic. <laughs> God. I don't have that vest anymore. 
It's not something that I chose to bring. <laughs> Alexa. Can, oh, you know what, Simmers? I really did miss you. That's sweet. Thank you for that. I had so much fun playing Billy Ford. Billy Ford Fordham. Um, I had so much fun doing that. It was such a, I mean, it was um, a, a wonderful opportunity for me as an actor as well to be able to, uh, to really try to like construct an overall arc on something like that. Um, and it was just so much fun. Um, or when James, who plays Spike, was, I mean, hilarious. Um, there's a moment where he, he when, I, when Ford goes to, to Spike, mm -hmm. You know, and it was like he'd be before it was like living in a movie, so he was always like quoting stuff and saying, "This is the part where you do this thing," and um, and James looked at me and he goes, "I'm gonna grab your ear." I mean, he told me he was gonna do it first, and then so and then he just grabbed like 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 you'd think like when my mother would do stuff like that sometimes, but he just grabbed my ear and started talking to me. It was hilarious. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. He's wonderful. All right now. I mean, it's so cool to be a part of so many different iconic shows. I mean, uh, what a, yeah, I was just, just a very lucky guy. Um, really lucky guy. People to this day are still, like the new generation, they're still going back and watching these shows and still keeping them alive. Yeah, I mean, very, very lucky to have such very um, uh, devout, passionate fans. It, uh, it, really means the world to me and it has you know kept so many people in contact and things alive it's really um it's extraordinary Lisa and Eric oh wow thank you for this is your second purchase thank you guys thank you so much That's very true. <laughs> there was just the green alien on everything. It's true. That's very true. There was a there was a skate shop, a, a skateboard shop called Alien, and I remember having like one of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when I went to go meet with Jason and with David for the very first time. I had been pretty sick, um, and so I my brother drove me to go meet them, and I was like, I was like. Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Cameron went to Egypt's land, let my Cameron go. So anyway, so so I was I was like I was just I was like I just need to stand up right for like like twenty minutes. I'll be fine. Um, and I told them they kept their distance, but I was totally joked about it. I had I was like I pulled out like one of my alien T-shirts, mm -hmm. my alien skateboard teach skate shops. And I was like I was thinking this could be his wardrobe. And Jason <laughs> looks at David and then looks back at me. I'm like I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Not not that on the nose. I get it. Trust me. Um, let's see. Also, I think we have Steven Spielberg to blame. He really was the guy who kind of yeah. ushered in like the idea that you know that's not so much of a threat. I mean, Close Encounters was one thing, but then with ET, I think I don't know. He just he, it made it seem like well, maybe they're not going to destroy us. Maybe there's something else out there for us. Right, Sandra. Oh, I love this. This makes me look so, I mean, like the golden eyes here, it looks like, it's kind of glossy, but very cool eyes. Yeah, Stan Winston, what a, what a tremendous genius and tremendous heart. Like what a, what a, what a human being. Um, special instructions. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for everything you do, you, you have done so much. I don't really 
do cast pictures like this anymore. <laughs> I'm looking at these Rosno friends. Like, how have I seen cast pictures like this? Yes, uh, you know, um, Oakenfeld did the, um, he was a big, a big photographer at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he does, he still works, or he had worked for a long time. Um, he is a guy who was our photographer. I remember feeling very lucky that we got him. Um, we did two days, and we did it at, um, there's a studio right by Warner Hollywood. Um, I'll remember it before this, this, um, this uh, live stream is done. But um, we did two days. The very first day, we did um, mostly uh, individual shots. Mm -hmm. um, and some groupings, like I know that uh, that um, Shuri and I did our, our stuff the very first day, and then and then the second day we started getting more of like the group together. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a cool spot right on the corner from there called Jones, um, on Santa Monica Boulevard. It was a, it's like an old like kind of like it's a good cool diner kind of thing. And I remember like hearing like George Clooney used to hang out there all the time <laughs> after that. And so I was like, oh okay. Um, but uh, but. Um, we all went out to eat the, that night afterwards at Jones, and then we had to get up super early the next day. And then all like the the poster was shot the next day, where it was um, mm. the the, um, the three aliens, and then Liz in the foreground. Yeah. Um, we shot that the next day. But yeah, they don't. A lot of times they get they get a group of people and they they shoot them individually, and then they just Photoshop them together. Mm -hmm. So there's there's not a real even though we're all kind of standing like looking kind of moody on this thing and not really <laughs> looking at each other. On this one, we the, the, we still had a great time before and after this was taken. And there's still an energy to the picture as well. Juliana. Okay, okay. Thank you guys so much. There's still a lot of VIPs up here. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, about this is we're able to reach so many people around the world that don't necessarily get to always go to conventions or things like that so it's cool to get to have them be a part of this yeah and this is i've actually i've never done a convention before so this is my my first time doing this stuff um so Do thank not. you guys all for showing up i've never done it before wow no, it's not. no. so this is uh, this is i mean I, this is a very special opportunity for me to be able to to reach so many people, um, and no one has to like fly out to come see me or drive, you know, a long ways to do this. So this is like, this is kind of like the best of all worlds. Yeah, I mean, we really just wanted it to where nobody has to travel. <laughs> Sophie from Australia would not be able to come out for this in person, <laughs> although I know she would. Sophie's done a lot for uh, for me and for for everybody on Raw as well. Um, I know Sophie. Sophie used to run um, a zoo in Australia. She's since oh, wow. changed vocations, but she had sent me a bunch of things of like her animal friends, which is really special to uh, That's so cool. To show Atticus. Let's see here. Just finished watching Roswell. You and the cast are amazing. They can do a show about Max Magasai. That's actually a good idea. I wonder. That's a great idea, Alice. Um, what did they ask? Well, you know, when we when we talked about <clears throat> when we talked about doing something that picked up with things left off, because mm. you know the, the the reboot was a was you know different actors and you know in essence different characters because yeah. they're you know different versions. Um, but we, when we talked about what it would be like to kind of find where these guys are now, what would be happening? 
you know, Max's son. A reunion. <laughs> Max's son was, was brought up, like, what would that be? What would that be like? Yeah. Um, his, his child with, with Tess. Um, so, yeah, that would be, be interesting. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Roswell Funko Pops. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, my, my, my friend Sophie, who uh, I just signed for mm-hmm. and who's... Um, Oh, I've got to know a little bit um, through all of this, which is wonderful. She sent me a uh, a, a Funko, a Max Funko oh, that wow. she designed, and I thought, yeah, that would be a that would be a fun one to kind of to uh, to do for this. That would be super cool. Yeah, it sits at my desk still, Sophie. So thank you. I will not let Atticus have it because I, I don't <laughs> think the head would stay on. He is nine after all. Um, all right, Brandy. Two? Another one. This is 29. Okay, we'll go back to that. Oh, I see. This is for Michelle. Good job. Thank you, so. Oh, thank you, Michelle. There's a few names that I, that I recognize on all of this. I see Jared is here, too. Michelle, Roswell, Michelle. Um, I, I just kind of, I, I got on I got on Instagram um, because when Roswell, New Mexico came up, they said this would be a helpful tool to connect with people and all that kind mm. of stuff. And it's been really amazing to be able to connect with with people like Michelle and Jared, with with Sophie or, or Christy, or like there are these people, Joyce. Like, you you get to see what they put out there, and they're supportive of you in a certain way. That it's just like it's really it's really extraordinary. I know it's it, it takes a lot of time. Um, let's see, let's see here, let's see here. Michelle, Sue, and Gold. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, Roswell and Buffy fans just go hand in hand. <laughs> yes. We're a specific breed. <laughs> um, that's why when we were in Japan, mm. um, it was uh, interesting. And it's Sarah like a and weird I. crossover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was interesting when when Sarah and I would go out oh, like that because you know. <laughs> I was I, I've been really lucky enough to honestly to be able to um, to uh, you know when when Dawson's Creek was in its heyday I was there for the mm-hmm. second season um, and walking on that set. They had all known each other for an entire year, and like you know, they could have very well just been like you know, show up, do your lines, and then you know, so yeah. But yeah. they were all so very welcoming, and so like, let's go hang out, let's go do this, let's go do that. And this was like very, very, very fortunate, very lucky. I count all my blessings that um, that the people that I've worked with and that I've you know encountered throughout my career have been so generous of their time and of themselves. So definitely count my lucky stars on that. Except for that Nick Wexler guy, I gotta, <laughs> gotta get over that. All right. Um, okay, Michelle. Sharpie. What? 
I break the Sharpie. Just That's going to be tough because it's like, oh, it's wow. Like, I don't even know how I did that. She's All right. got some super alien strength. <laughs> All right, Michelle, that's for you. Thank you. Look at that hair. I often think about like what that would look because my son has hair kind of like me, and I and I he had it long for so long, and he just cut it, so it kind of looks a little bit like that. And it looks really cool, but I don't know if I could do the bangs anymore. I think that would be kind of I don't know. I, I'm kind of this is this long hair is kind of just by sheer laziness, though. It looks cool. Oh, thank you. That's all put back. So I'm kind of I'm kind of getting that Brad Pitt sort of like <laughs> I don't give it a kind of like <laughs> thing because <clears throat> Brad doesn't give a and he I mean looks amazing and stylish <laughs> all the time. Uh, oh, for Jeff. All right. This is amazing, guys. There's so many VIP orders. Potato carrots. 2000. Yes, I do have Future Max here for sure. It's de definitely, <laughs> it's definitely getting there. I just need a little Bushido top knot up here, and a leather vest maybe, <laughs> some scars. Um, yeah, Future Max. Welcome to my country, Sweden. I uh, I have so many friends from Sweden, and a lot of my New York friends uh, go back there. Um, from uh, often, uh, I, I hear it's amazing. Um, and in Minnesota, we have a lot of Scandinavian blood, so a lot of the people that I was mm -hmm. around um, had Scandinavian descent. Uh, I'm going to get back to you. Jared is another who's been incredibly supportive over the years. so cool to have fans that just follow you throughout your entire career, that your character resonated with them so much. It's the reason why I get to do what I do, honestly. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, when you have people who are supportive of you and follow you and will, and will um, see the stuff that you put out there and really champion you, it's, um, it's why I get to do what I do. This is frozen. <laughs> Ryan's mama. Thank you, Ryan's mama. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind to say. I wonder how long we've been going on for this now. I got questions <laughs> over here. What is what does this one mean? This is. How do I change the clock on the microwave? Um. Do we, I see this right here, these questions, these other, these are other questions here that someone's sending. <laughs> uh, Possibly? Yeah, I don't want to click out of here. <laughs> have you seen Silence the Set Podcast? I have not. Silence on Set Podcast. I have not. Um, I have not, I have not, I have not. Silence on Set. Have you heard of that one? Mm. Was Christian Bale on that? Was Tom Cruise on that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Tom to show up at my house, Mike. <laughs> um, for any of you out there, it was a joke about being quiet on set. Um, <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. What's my favorite food? I got so many different favorite foods. Um, I will say this. One of my favorite things ever is my grandmother used to make uh, her, her like we world famous fudge. She had a fudge um, recipe that was, that was generationally long like wow. that she like it was just it was just like passed on from grandmother to grandmother to grandmother and um i haven't had it since she passed away that was one of my favorite things in the world my grandmother's fudge um but also i will say um when i was in japan i was happy as can be because sushi is one of my all-time favorites um greetings from perth yes i have friends who were born in perth um i never got back there myself but Rubiquity. Oh yeah, Rubiquity is saying hi to Sandra. <laughs> Rubiquity is uh, my brother's wife, um, and I've I've known her, my brother, and 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 that Aaron was in the uh, seventh grade and she was in the eighth grade when they met. Oh wow! And started dating. Um, That's incredible. So they've been together for, I mean, a lifetime. Um, 
Yeah, pretty extraordinary. Um, halal. Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, all right, halal. Some really cool names. These numbers are jumping all over the place, so I'm just keeping an eye, making okay. sure. I want to make sure it gets sent to the right person. <laughs> One is for Brenda. Um, I'm gonna stick with the silver, I think. It seems to be working out so well. Oh, that's the quote that you've been saying. It was you, yes. One of my favorites. Yeah, when I, when I saw my, uh, my my signature for my security pass, I was like, yeah, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> a little bit different, maybe a little more, I don't know, distinguished, but uh, as we get older, I'm distinguished in my age and distinguished in, distinguished in my uh, handwriting. What's so great about Norm? Maria. Now, Maria, I, I, I know who you are as well, but I don't know how to say your name. It's Maria, Mireya. It's another beautiful name, I'm just not exactly sure how to say it, so maybe someday when we meet, you can tell me. Um, Brenda, ha, it is me. Ha, <laughs> Brenda, I just, I just signed for you, I believe. Um, thank you. That's wonderful. This is very cool that I get to do this. And I'm doing it because of you guys, so thank you. Um, let's see here. Let's feel it. What's so great about Norma? Mm. Morgan, are you getting hungry at all? We have a, I, I brought this I'm entire tray of like, Isn't this candy, crazy? there's candy. I'm surprised there's not an open <laughs> bar, honestly. If you had any of my other castmates. I'm just <laughs> There you go, Maria. Mireya, I think it might be Mireya, I think so. Tina. And then we're back to 32. There okay. we go, back in order. All right, no, do I think you, we're, do you want no, a snack? I'm actually good right now, but thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you had Tabasco sauce. I mean, yeah. we messed up there. <laughs> Next time, are you ready? I feel like we should be listening to Debbie Gibson or maybe Madonna, like <laughs> this. <laughs> Some serious neon happening over here. I know we tried music a few times. Um, if it's like copyright, they always like put our video down. Oh, oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Maybe next time I'll bring a kazoo and just do my own music. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
Um, or a recorder, there's those recorders. Otherwise, we would have played the Roswell theme from the very beginning, just know, to very, start it Just to get off. people going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you imagine, like, if I showed up, like, singing the Roswell song, the Dido song? I, I would, the, the screen would just, probably like, crack. Just, fade, fade into it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> an awful crooning of, like, <laughs> someone throws a shoe at me. Um, let's see, so Sandra said, don't forget to, uh, Save the recording. I will definitely not forget mm -hmm. that. The mariachi song. No más tres días yo teme. I think that's how it goes. Um, all right, Susan. to Paul. Ooh, I'm signing one. Max Evans. What would Max's signature look like? Hmm. Okay, no. I, th I think I can, I think I can <laughs> swing this one. The Chlorolic commercial. That's right. <laughs> uh, will forever be a life change? Yes, Chlorolic. Um, all right. Let's, I'm going to sign this to Paul. So when I was in San Diego, I was like I was, I was saying I was doing that one... Um, I was doing a TV show called Push for ABC, mm. and it was a, a show that was about Olympic hopeful. It was one that my younger brother was in, Aaron. And um, the uh, producers, uh, two of them were from, from London. And right after the show wrapped, they had asked me, they were doing a commercial, they had made a lot of commercials. Um, uh, a lot of their money in commercials, and they would ask if I want to do a commercial that was going to be in Italy only. And this is oh, back wow. in the day when, like, Schwarzenegger was doing stuff and, like, you know, and Stallone, all these guys were, like, going overseas to, like, Japan where things wouldn't get seen or they thought they wouldn't get seen over here. But then, of course, eventually they did. <laughs> and she was like, we're just doing it in Italy. Do you want to go to this commercial in Italy? So I, I mean, not in Italy. I thought it was going to be that, but we ended up shooting it um, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I did this commercial for a, an Italian gum called Chlorolet. Um and I have not seen that for ages. I wonder if it's still out there. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Cool, I haven't heard that name in a long, long time. Okay. This one is to Paul, who just reminded me of an amazing Corla commercial, because um, that was some good guns. I don't think I've actually signed Max Evans before. This is, might be my really? very first. I don't think I have. I don't. That's so cool. Yeah, there you go. Very I, know, first. I know I've written Max Evans before and done that kind of stuff, or maybe, maybe signed Max uh, on some of the stuff in the show, but never actually Max Evans like a signature. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Paul McCartney. Oh yeah. Are you, Matt Mat Matthias Matthias. It's going by, by so fast. Builder. You're thinking about my, my Paul McCartney, my, my Paul McCartney story. Yes, that's a, <laughs> that's for another time, I think. But yes, Paul McCartney, I have a story about Paul. If only Jason... Oh, the driver's license? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Aaron, <laughs> my brother's, my brother is um, watching this. Don't you have a soccer game to go to, Aaron? <laughs> um, talk about my work on Senseless. Senseless was... Uh, was a, a you know one of those movies that was done for not a lot of money and it was a very small crew to Diana Max oh to Diana Max and Liz Forever okay Black Sharpie I will do a Max Evans cool I like it Another boom this Max is going Evans away all right the second of its kind <laughs> the second the second um. Max in this forever. That's said it. That's very sweet. Dreamers, dreamers. Okay. On the upper left. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And when 
when you have a sec, they're wanting me to have you pin your store link to your live. I will show you how to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do something for, uh, I think. There we go. All right, this is for Dan and Maximus Forever. Okay, so I'm supposed to do something here for uh So what you're going story. to do is write in the comments mm -hmm. uh streamily dot com slash Jason Bear with the number one after it. Okay. And then once you add that to the comments, you'll hold it and it will pin it to streamily dot com slash so the comma instead. That's not gonna help us. Streamly.com slash Jason Bear and then a number one. I look right to you. Put post, yeah. Okay, and then hold it or just hit post? Hit post and then once it's post, now, yep, hold it. And then like Technology that. happening. Boom. And then comment. comment. Boom. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I made this. I can do this. All right. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that helps you guys out there. All right. For Debbie. I'm doing well here. All right. All right. All right. All right. This is amazing. What a. This is so cool. Um, I found your career. I'm a loyal fan. OG Maxim is. My favorite couple on Roswell. Max Evans is my favorite Eddie. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. He's mine too, by the way. <laughs> um, nothing against Brandon or Katie. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but uh, the three of us did did make a pretty good group. Uh, let's see. Okay, for Debbie. so many dreamers out there. That would be pretty cool. Some of these, I'm um, having them prep more because you're like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Let's see here. What did you think of Roswell Reboot? Did you enjoy playing the new character in the show? I thought it was, I, what, a, what a tremendous honoring to, to be a part of something that, that they do reboot, honestly. Like, to say that, 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 um, you know, the characters were so interesting, the story so interesting that, that there's another version of it to be told. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really, really wonderful. And I think what Karina did was incredible. Um, and uh, um, my time on that, when, when Karina first um, brought it to my attention, she told me that, um, uh, that I would be playing a part that was very integral to the history of Roswell and to um, one of the characters in particular and and um, when she laid it out that it was going to be a kind of a Roshaman kind of storytelling which is um, so when when I was in Tokyo we, we shot it at Toho Studios which is where um, Kurosawa did all of his films and um, Kurosawa was one of and still is to this day one of my favorite filmmakers ever um, sort of be there on, on that hollow ground was extraordinary in Japan. But um, but Roshiman is also one of my favorite movies of his. Um, and for any of you that are unfamiliar with that, it's about um, a story being told from different characters' perspectives, and every time they tell the story, it's a different story. Um, and so as they were getting to know who this mystery character was, um, they didn't even know his name. Um, at first, but when it was t understood that it was Trip Mains, um, that as they started to get more information, the story kind of shifted perspectives, and 
excuse me, what you thought was happening was actually something very, very different once you had more information. And so they kept on retelling certain mm. certain parts of the story so you'd get a different lens. And um, I just thought it was wonderful. And uh, it was also the second time in my life on a Roswell show that I got to play an older, <laughs> distinguished gentleman. Uh, <laughs> when when I was when I did it for the, the OG one, the prosthetics were very different. And then um, I got to play a very uh, an 80s version of Trip Mains. So he was... Uh, a much older gentleman, and so um, I have Karina to thank for that as well for putting me through all that that old makeup. <laughs> um, How long did it take? Oh boy, um, it takes a while because they have to they have to cast your face first, your mm -hmm. your shoulders, yeah. and that's a process of like, you know, they they you have like two small straws to breathe through your nose, <laughs> and that's it. And that, the more they put on the plaster on your head, the more like you want to slump <laughs> forward because it's pretty heavy. Um, and it takes some time. And some people, some people, they don't do well with that. Some people, they need like a hand to hold or some people just can't do it. Um, I found it to be very zen and very relaxing. The only thing that was a little bit tough was like to maintain that sort of like upright position because you did just want to kind of slump forward. Um, but uh, but uh, it took about three hours, three and a half hours wow. to do. Yeah, and I, I met some of the cast members. Um, <laughs> who, who, I did the very first table read for Roswell, New Mexico. I had a just a just a white T-shirt on, like so. Imagine like this white T-shirt, um, and like so, and then like the 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 face of a <laughs> six, seventy year old person, eighty year old person on on top. It was very so yeah. <laughs> Um, that was, so I did the table read. Nobody knew who the, who the hell I was because they're like, what's this? <laughs> what's happening? Um, you know, and we're all like, you know, it was very hard because I, and also because I was trying to enunciate through all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, but it was a, a wonderful time. <laughs> Please sign up for Max Evan Shanine. Some amazing names. I love it. All right. I'm going to switch over Shanine to, um, to Silver because I think that's going to show up a little bit better on this. To Shanine. Um, yeah, that was, uh, was quite the experience on that show. It was, and it was very surreal for me as well, because, um, for three seasons, I would, um, uh, you know, go back to my trailer in Trailer Land, uh, on Roswell, and I would walk to Max Evans' trailer, and, and that would be my time to sort of relax or to look at the next stuff or to eat my food, um. And it took me a good week and then some. Every time I go back to trailer land, I would turn towards Max Evans and I'd start to walk up and I'd go, oh, oh no, that's, uh, that's not me anymore. It's, uh, it's Nathan. I didn't want to walk in on Nathan like in any sort of undress. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, was, it took a long time for me not to walk in on him. Um, hello. Oh, again, hello. I just want to say that you're my first love and always will be. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you, hello. Thank you. Um, all right, this was a fun movie. Skinwalkers was a, it was so much fun to do as well. Not just, again, I'm gonna go, I'll go back to um, meeting my hero, my the the myth, the legend, the the uh, the genius extraordinaire, um, Stan Winston. But um, I was also able to do my own stunts in a way that I'd never had the opportunity to do before. Um, and it wasn't just the riding of the bike and stuff like that, but like we we did like these full on monster fights with, and it wasn't it was it wasn't just the makeup because Stan wanted to give the uh, the performance back to the actor. He wanted to go, and like Lon Chaney uh, of of old times to uh, to give the the performance back to just the little facial movements, um, but then like the the body of the 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 monsters, it was a full suit, but you had I had some free range of motion, but I had to do a full fight with. A harness being <laughs> pulled up like two stories up and then oh grab onto a gosh. railing and then jump off again and then try not to just completely splat um, Elias Katias. Like I had to like hit him, I'd get pulled up, I'd jump up, grab the railing and then jump all the way down and then like grab him like this with giant yellow contacts in that were 
they bulged out like that. And so like my eyelids were really, it was, oh suffice it to say, it was not the most conducive thing for safety um, or being able to see, but we, but, but me and Elias and our stunt coordinator, um, extraordinaire, we were able to, Steve Vesescu is his name, we were up in Toronto, um, who became a really great mate of mine. And um, we, like, we really worked out all the kinks and I was able to do all this stuff on my own, which was like, you know, a childhood dream of mine to be able to do that. That's so cool. I still have the teeth. <laughs> um. I uh, I made the mistake of trying to scare my grandmother <laughs> with them when I got back. Cause my my grandma was I mean like just a powerhouse, and. Um, <laughs> She almost knocked my block off because <laughs> <laughs> I was staying in the kitchen with the teeth, and I was kind of like joking around. I was kind of I was kind of playing off the story that Stan had told me about when he had his teeth in the very first time he went out for Halloween, and was dressed up as a as sort of like a werewolf mm -hmm. slash kind of vampire, like a sort of a, but but like how the police were like out looking for someone who looked like a werewolf, and, um, and so Stan told me the story about when they stopped him and he had full teeth and eyes in, and he's like werewolf, werewolf I haven't seen each night, and then, and how the cops were like okay, and then they kept on going. So I did that to my grandmother. I kind of, I was like cooking for her, and she had asked me a question, and I said, "What was that?" <laughs> and she, she almost just rocked me right in the right in the foot of. <laughs> I wasn't worried about her, her health in any way. I, I was more worried about mine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Karen, oh, I know Karen. Karen, there are no special instructions, so I'm going to um, wing it here. All right. Um, Karen. All right. Wonderful. There you go, Karen. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Again. These numbers. There you go. All right. All right. All right. So, I want a max quote. <laughs> so many. All right. Okay. So I see there's another there's another max quote coming up next. Um, about what's so great about normal. So I'm gonna do something different for you, Melissa. over to you. Perfect. Um, oh, I should probably go back here. Why are you still close with Mirage? Well, I mean, all of them, really. Um, they, everyone sort of moved out of town. Um, I think Colin and, uh, and Nick and I are the only ones left in Los Angeles. Um, would I ever consider attending a con? Um, yes, absolutely. I don't know. I don't, I, again, this is, I'm, so new at this, I don't know um, <laughs> what cons are the ones that that uh, that that uh, I don't even know what cons are out there, honestly. <laughs> um, um, but this has been this has been really extraordinary for me. Um, but also, I, I I feel like I'm able to to reach a, a lot of people who I know just through my interactions and would not be able to um, mm -hmm. to come out to to anywhere um, you know outside of 
their their country or their city. So um, um, maybe at some point, but I, I don't know. I might. And next time we have to have the Tabasco sauce. <laughs> yes, yes. If not just for me and whatever donut I eat. <laughs> donut. <laughs> um, would die for you to go to the con. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. Someone just asked me. It was crispy and crispy cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Krispy Kreme used to be a huge favorite of mine, and they would, mm. and sometimes some people would show up and uh, generously give me some to eat, because um, my brother and I, Aaron, and um, mm. some of my 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 buddies would go. They only had they had one Krispy Kreme out here. I I fell in love with them in Dawson's Creek in North Carolina, and I was just like, you can watch them be made. <laughs> 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 and um, and uh, so when they opened up one out here, it was I think forty minutes away. It was inland. I can't remember exactly what city it was in. I mean, but there was like the only, so we would drive all the way out oh to gosh. get Krispy Kreme, and then we'd go, there's a go-kart racing thing nearby, so we would go and do that. Um, oh, and ask if I still like donuts. Um, I do, um, but I, 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 um, I don't eat them as much as I probably should. Um, New York Comic Con in Manhattan. Oh, okay. What about Breakout Kings and Damien? That was so, oh, super so weird playing the villain. Yes. Um, that was, yeah, that, playing Damien, that was something that um, I, uh, I there's so much, someone asked me about an actor as well. I was trying to find that. Um, if, you ask, if you ask me something about an actor, if you want to go ahead and re repost that, because um, I think you were asking me about actors that I liked, or is it interesting? It's just kind of going forward. Okay. Um, Damien, um, when they approached me about that as well, um, I was playing, um, I, I, I knew the, I knew the, the show, um, and I was like, okay, I get to play somebody who's like a legit bad guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, they told me what the, what the arc was. And, um, I, I was excited about having that opportunity to sort of like, you know, uh, spread my wings a little bit differently and, 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 and go in that direction to just sort of explore that. Um, it is a very dark place to be, of course, but the very first uh, episode, when you see Damien, he's, he's broken out of a, a Max penitentiary, and we were shooting in um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and so mm. there was a, like, one of the worst places you can go to. Like, there was, like, like this very famous, it's still there, obviously, but, um, uh, prison, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully I'll remember it by the time we, we get out of here. But um, they were they had this one wing that was the old death row oh, wow. that they had they were they were changing in some way, and so we had access to this certain section that was death row, and the vibe of that place was just I was in a cell, extremely haunted. Well, yes, <laughs> like it was just like 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 it was like the, it was just like the energy in that place was. So so intense, mm -hmm. so intense. I mean, I was in an, a legit cell, and so we do the we do the scene where I'm where I'm where I'm um, you know in the cell, and you know there's a guard who comes by and, and, and talks to me and all this stuff, and I, I get um, sort of like my, my way out. Then we, we we finish that, then we go up to the roof, and part of the scene is Damien does this makeshift sort of he puts his belt over a. a, a power lines mm -hmm. and does like an impromptu like zip line like yeah. a MacGyver zip line um, over some razor wire and then out into the field drops down um, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, so I'm doing my own stuff right so they get me in a harness and they put me on the belt is hiding the actual pulley system of the zip line and the stunt he comes over to me and goes okay so when we do this that's real razor wire it's like real stuff. So when you do it, just really make sure you pull your, your feet up. Oh my god! Because the zip line is going like right down by it. No problem. And I'm like going, like like how high? He's like, just like really high. Just like make sure. So, so I'm uh, so they they do it. It's it's in the middle of the night. They do it and they, and I go like that and I I'm ready for it. And I go and I just remember it came upon me really fast. And I'm thinking, if I don't pull up my feet right now, I'm just gonna just shred uh. all of this, all of this down here. Like, aside from wardrobe, I'm just gonna shred all of this stuff right here. And so I, I turtled up so much, I must have brought my knees like up to my neck. <laughs> but it just came upon me so fast, and it felt like it got really close. 
And so we, we went through and we got it, and of course I'm not going to drop, so they just stop me and suspend me over the, the razor wire. And everyone applauds, and then I kind of look over to my right, and there is the entire new section of death row, and all the inmates just looking at me through the oh fence like, Oh my gosh. It ain't that fucking easy, kid. <laughs> just like looking at me. <laughs> and I, I felt like, it's first of all, such an imposter, but also like, what a weird thing to be a part of. That's crazy. It was very, it was very, it was very like, um, yeah, very strange. Um, so that was my answer for, for um, <laughs> Breakout Kings. Um, you get me talking and I will go. Um, all right, me. Put to Nisha. Okay, I'm gonna give this for Nisha. But I, again, I made some really wonderful friends on that as well. So great about normal. Um, Nick Santoro was one of the guys who um, uh, uh, made that show, and he just emailed me the other day. He's got a new show um, that that I've been watching that I love. Um, I keep in contact with him, um, and uh, I felt really bad about killing Laz, though. <laughs> for all you people who don't know, sorry for the spoiler, but um, <clears throat> they made a real big change in the in the season two of, uh, of Breakout Kings, and uh, I was the guy who who did the deed. So um, yeah. All right. Oh, here's a good one. This was fun. This was the, we shot this in um, in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and this was my first uh, episode. And uh, I think this was my my second night on the job. We did all, all night shoots in the middle of the desert, um, but it was pretty it was pretty cool and surreal to be that guy, um, the alien hunter, um, <laughs> or, or is he? Hmm. Um, but yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. I did my I did my own stunt in that too, a little bit, kind of sort of. Um, all right, this is for Debbie. Um, but Jimmy Simpson is is uh, is one of my buddies too. He's an uh, incredibly gifted actor, um, funny as hell. Um, but I, I had a lot of fun with him down there as well. But he was he was my my main dancing partner in uh, in that show. So the next one is going to be the last VIP order. So I am going to go ahead and close the store. Okay. And then we can always reopen it for our next signing and then also pre-sign stuff. <laughs> on the back of the photo anyway, okay. so Wendy I know Wendy she's asking me to uh, trace my hand and not draw a turkey <laughs> um, but a max quote love you thanks Wendy um, yeah I can do that um, let me see here I'm going to see if there's trip mains love that character I did too Red Girl 15. Hello, hello. Um, Miss Sally Joy. Oh, thank you for that. I, yeah, I had a great time when I was in Mexico. Please don't be a serial killer again. <laughs> you literally create. Yeah. Um, when I was playing... Um, uh, what's going on, Kang? Um, you know, nothing. Just chilling. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I played um, Chris Wolf on Dawson's Creek, my little sister at the time, I had played this guy on Push, who was very, very competitive, so much so that he didn't need any friends, and he was just really driven, and, you know, on the surface wasn't the nicest guy. 
and uh, and then I went and played, um, and a, the guy in Buffy wanted to kill Buffy, <laughs> and um, and then I played a guy on uh, on um, Seventh Heaven who was paid to take Jesse Beale out on a date, which I was like, I don't I don't really quite understand why someone would have to be paid to go out with Jesse, but <laughs> but um, I'm happy for the job, so. So that that guy or turned out to be not the I mean like not like the coolest for doing that, and so um, when I started playing uh, Chris Wolf, my little sister Leah said to me, she's telling me very sweetly she was maybe eleven or twelve maybe very young, she says, Uncle Jason. So there's my brother. Sorry, she says, Jason, what? When are you not going to be a creep? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like. I don't know. I have, <laughs> someday, someday, um, sis. But uh, but then, thankfully enough, I got Roswell right after that. But um, but Damien was kind of going back to the the not so nice guy. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of fun people. But I think he was probably the darkest character that I ever played. Um, well, again, it's gonna be fun. Black T-shirt. All right. So Wendy, um, I'm gonna write you something on the front and then I'll do my, the handprint on the back there for you. And Wendy is my, my, my last uh, one, the VIP one. And we can go on to the next one then. Perfect. Okay. Which ones did you say were the most popular? I'm going to let that dry real quick. Well, Wendy, this, one, now this was pretty popular. There's only like three left. <laughs> there you go. And I would say these two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to let this dry real quick, Wendy. You're welcome, Wendy. You're welcome. And then I'm going to do the, the handprint on the back of that oh. one. She wants me to do the turkey one. If I draw a turkey, don't get angry. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, I think. Sandra, of course. And thank you, Sandra, for staying up until 3 a.m. for doing this. From the land of Robin Hood and Batman. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. I think that's, I'm going to do this one. And so what is it, what does it go on for, what do we do now? We can Let's do one more, okay. and then Jason will sign the rest off camera, and then he'll do another signing <laughs> someday, and hopefully we will get him to sign some Tabasco sauce bottles. <laughs> some Tabasco, yeah, yeah. You should do narrate an audio book. You have an awesome, well, thank you so much for that. Thank you. It's funny that you're so yes, I had, that's what I, I did voiceovers when I was a kid, and um, they were people had been saying that I should do something like that, and I, I, uh, I would love to do something like that. I would love to. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, and I've been listening to a lot of like um, um, audiobooks, uh, a lot of, like of the Harry Potter ones, mm. which I don't know if anybody has done that because I've been doing it a lot with my my son the the man who does the um Harry Potter voices should get every award possible for that because he's playing so many different characters mm -hmm. and they're very specific characters what he's doing is incredibly difficult because he's going from one to one to da, da, da. it's extraordinary like what the the talent that that man has but it made me think yeah I would love if someone were, would want me to narrate one of their books I would love to do one of those things that would be so much fun to do um and then I would also, I, the, um, I, got, I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but I, I went and met with the directors for a, a Disney movie once called Brother Bear. And I, oh. thought, I thought, oh, well, this is so apropos. It's like, this has got to happen because <laughs> it's got to happen. But um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix ended up doing it. Um, again, I, I, I worry about him. I hope he's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, God. I wonder what he's doing. Um, <laughs> But uh, but um, 
but it was a great experience to go into Disney and, and to to meet the directors and to to um, to just go through that whole process of what that what that is to do that because it is a very different um, uh, different artistry and um, it got me thinking like now that I have a nine year old um, I would love to do more of that kind of stuff mm. so that he could see something of mine he he honestly has not seen anything that I've done he, oh, he, wow. yeah and I, I don't because I don't most of the stuff that I've done I don't think <laughs> he should see maybe ever but <laughs> but um, but although he has, he was out of nowhere doing the grudge sound um, yesterday. Really? Out of nowhere, he just started doing this thing, and Katie and I looked at each other like, "Where did you? Where did you hear that?" And he's like, <laughs> "I don't know." I'm like, "That's the sound from the grudge," because he knows we met in the movie The Grudge because yeah. somebody somebody told him, um, but that had happened, and and um, and 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 he's like, "Really?" And we shouldn't have told him because now he's doing it <laughs> all the time. And I don't want people to think he's seen the movie, but um, he's, he hasn't seen a thing that we've done. Um, uh, neither myself nor Katie. Um, I think he might be kind of ready for Roswell in a few years, but there, you know, I don't know. Um, if I were to do some other voiceover stuff, like for for animation stuff or for a, an audiobook, that would be my entree to like you know let him see that or experience that. So maybe That's I don't know. Awesome. We'll see if there's anybody out there who has a book of poetry for me to read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna do this for Wendy really quick. Now, Wendy, in the show. Um, it was my right hand, but I am not left-handed. So <laughs> I can attempt to do it with my, I'm gonna attempt to do it with my left because I've broken this hand enough times that I'm somewhat good at my left hand. <laughs> so let's, let's go on this adventure together. Let's see if this works. All right, I'm gonna, um, all right, okay. <laughs> Godspeed. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> This is me going over my index finger. <laughs> um, the last time I did something like this, uh, it was to make a turkey um, <laughs> with Atticus. So it's going to be probably just the same way it was last time where my fingers are not gonna look anything like this. Um, it's a rough estimate, <laughs> but um, we'll see. What did they use to do the handprint on the show? Oh, um, you mean like for the for the silver stuff? Mm -hmm. It was so it, it was um, it was a silver paint um, that they used, um, which was uh, it stayed on there for a little bit of time. But um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out. Like that. Um, uh, yeah, silver paint. A lot of the stuff that they used was like I remember. So I'll just tell this one story real quick. Um, when we did the, the show Monsters. Um, I looked like a, a neon green alien Elvis, if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> but they they basically spray painted my face green, um, and I had like this green jumper, and they had taken my hair and just like ratted it up, so it was all like in this bouffant of hair and just <laughs> hair sprayed it. So I, I looked like I looked like a green Elvis, and and um, and and but they spray painted my face and they spray painted my hands, and then they called lunch. Oh my gosh. So I went into my trailer to go like hang out and like maybe like look at some of the stuff the rest of the day and everything I touched it was just like sticking to my hands <laughs> and, and, and like I would I was like you know like, I couldn't get anything so I I just sat there in my trailer like this for the whole hour of lunch break because I couldn't eat I couldn't do anything <laughs> that was probably one of the words like it was like next time we'll put something on my hands where I can actually function in different ways. But, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff they, they use was like sticky. your actual handprint, though. Um, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, there, there, were other, there were other characters, like, um, they, they did a couple of flashbacks where they were showing, um, in the pilot as well, where they're showing um, somebody who had died in the 40s, like around, oh, like, yeah, in yeah. 47, like, when, when, when the crash happened. Mm -hmm. um, and the handprint was more, like, kind of like... Um, it wasn't like this, it, but it was more like just straight up like that. Yeah. And that wasn't my hand. That was somebody else's, obviously, because it was supposed to be. I think it was Nisego. Um, They're very um, particular about those details. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff on that show. A lot of fun memories. A lot of um, great relations and um, wonderful people that I met and, and uh, have kept with me um, over the years. But um, thank you guys so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun for me and. Um, um, just a wonderful experience. I hope you guys had fun as well. 
Um, Morgan, is there anything else that you need from me? Um, Jason will sign all of the rest of the prints off camera. Thank you guys so much for all of your VIP orders and all the orders. Oh, it's been so amazing. Um, and thank you, Jason, for joining us. It's been so fun. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, it's a lot, some of the stuff that I've talked about I haven't spoken about ever, and sometimes um, <laughs> it's nice to revisit those things. So. And if you guys want any specific merch, let us know so we can make sure to add that to Jason's store. Yes, any, any suggestions that you guys have? Um, I have a couple ideas now after, after doing this. Um, I have a few ideas that I might do, but, um, but thank you again so much for, for being here with me and for supporting UNICEF and for having this experience. It was really, um, it was really lovely. And, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Amazing. I will forget to save it. I will definitely save it. <laughs> Show it me. Show it me. All right. Let's see how I do this now. Boom. Exit. There you go now. And now.